All right, good morning, church. Um, for those on the video, if you're catching this on YouTube, um, I just showed the church a guy named, his last name is Reese, his first name is Greg. By the way, I have to talk in code because of censorship. Um, he was on the War of Information, and he, he released a report called The Ritual Regicide of the Romanov Dynasty that had to do with uh, what the Bolsheviks did to, did to the uh, royal family at the time so that they can bring in their order. And as you guys know, Russia was under communist um, um, control for the last 150 years. And uh, a lot of good things are actually happening in Russia, and I know that our media is not telling you what's actually going on over there, but they are definitely, definitely want us to be in, in a war with them. On Wednesday nights, we, st we talked about what is it that is restraining evil in uh, Second Thessalonians, and there you guys go, you got another view of that, what that is, what that possibly could be. So evil people... Um, at one point in time, and uh, for all those who just watched that video, now you know why I and most of the Pentecostal church, and even I'll, put, I'll bring the Assemblies of God in, we don't like secret societies. We do not like them because of the evil that they do. And uh, that report showed us a lot of good things to understand. Um, the reason I bring up AG is because they actually have an, uh, an ordinance that you cannot be part of their church and be part of a secret society. So, I'm sure some of them are good old boy clubs where they go and, you know, they might know Jesus and they have a beer with the guys. And they raise some funds for whatever, but now you know some history of why we want nothing to do with that. Evil's been going on for a very, very long time. And uh, if, if people don't believe in the satanic world order, that's what I call it, uh, they need to read the Bible and understand there is a God of this world, and Jesus told us all to, to uh, understand that greater is he that's in us than he is in the world, and also understand that he has overcome the one in the world. Those are the words of Jesus. So the evil satanic world order has been going on for a very long time, and now Russia is coming out of it. I wanted to show you guys that because that's going to lead right into some things I have to tell you tonight, this morning, sorry. And uh, I titled this sermon, The Lessons from, Lessons from the Thief on the Cross. So let's begin. Let's read Luke 23, 39 through 43. And it says, Then one of the criminals who, was, who, who were hung blasphemed him, saying, If you're the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answered, rebuking him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing that we are under the same condemnation? And indeed, and we indeed justly we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said to him, Surely I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Amen? That's the scripture. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for every good thing you've given us. We thank you for every good thing you're doing in our lives. I plead your blood over us, Lord, and I just ask, Lord, that you lead us and guide us and direct us into all truth. And Lord, we just pray again for our country, Lord, that it will return to being a godly country. And Lord, I ask, Lord, that alternative media will not be shut down that's bringing out the truth. And Lord, I ask that you will, you will show the world what the national media that's being controlled is actually saying. Lord, I ask that today, Lord, that people will hear this message and they'll understand the power of repentance and how wonderful it is, Lord, that even though everything is coming down upon us, Lord, our future is secure in you. And we give you praise, glory, and honor for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, the thief on the cross. Let's look at verse 39 again. It says, Then one of the criminals who were hung blasphemed him, saying, If you're the Christ, save yourself and us. 
This first thief is only concerned about his life and wants Jesus to prove himself. Okay. Jesus and others in you, what a wonderful way to spell joy. For the Christian, we are not worried about our life. Our life is secure in Christ. We're worried about everybody else. And um, the news just broke out that uh, Russian warships and uh, submarines are now showing up in Cuba. I'm very worried about everybody else's life. Some days I almost welcome death. I've done so many funerals lately, I, I know more good people up there than I do down here. But I don't want us to be killed. And I know a lot of people who still need Jesus. Amen? This guy, he's not care, he don't care about anyone else, but he's going to go ahead and mock this guy who thought he was the Savior. And he says, hey, if you really are him, how about you save yourself? Joining in with the mocking crowd, if you read the whole, uh, the whole account. And then he says, save us. We're there with you. But you know what? We get this. Before I move on from this guy... He must have missed all the miracles that happened, or most likely. See, as Pentecostals, we get into this thing where we're like, man, if the miracles would just flow again, people would get saved. But you got to remember in the gospel, miracles were flowing all the time, and people still didn't believe. Amy Simple McPherson, who started the Foursquare Church, and you're in a Foursquare Church, by the way, she wrote in her book that she watched people see miracles in front of their faith, Face And then when they came up to talk to her, they had no belief in God. That's how much this world can poison you and blind you. When a miracle happens underneath your own nose, you still don't believe it. So this guy, either he didn't see the miracles or, here's the answer, he didn't want God. He was not interested in God. And of course, you see in his request, there is no repentance. But let's look at the thief on the cross. Christian history calls him the wise thief, the repenting thief. Yeah. Why do they call him the wise thief? Because he starts talking about the fear of God. Here it is. But the other, but the other answering rebuked him saying, do you not even fear God, seeing that we are under the same condemnation? Wow. Wow. What did he just say there? Well, he quoted a proverb we're going to look at here in a minute. But he also said, look, when we get to the verse after that, this guy did nothing wrong, but we're guilty. Do you guys know that right now there, are, there, are, there is alternative media all over the place that's being shut down by legal suits and, and arrest and all sorts of other things like that? Do you guys know that? There's a guy, his last name is Bannon, and, his, and he goes by the name Steve. And uh, they're going to put him in jail. Um, for those who know about the War of Information, uh, they're trying to get their security company to shut the place down, even though they got uh, judge orders that they cannot shut it down. Do you guys know how much trouble Mike Lind uh, Mr. Lindell is under right now? Because he's just trying to expose to everyone what's actually going on. He's a good Christian guy who sells really nice pillows. I have them. I recommend them. They're really great. So, I'm going to show you an article from the, the Gateway Pundit. They're being sued to oblivion right now. And there are, there are like several others that I can just kill, go on and list and list and list. People are condemning others who are trying to get truth out. And they are under the same condemnation as criminals when they have not done anything to deserve what they're getting. He says to this guy, the other guy, the first thief, the second one says, Do you not even fear God, seeing that we're under the same condemnation? And then he's going to go on and say, He has done nothing wrong. But let's stick with verse 40 for just a second. We see... This right, we see the righteous in this man, the righteousness in this man as he rebukes the other thief. All right. So, John the Baptist talked about the fruits of repentance. All right. Let's look at the fruits of repentance. You guys want to look at the fruits of repentance? Let's look at the fruits of repentance in Luke 3 8 through 14. 
Here's John the Baptist talking. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourself, we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you, God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. The gospel went to the Jew first, right? And then some of them rejected it. Where did it go? To all of us. Yeah. God can raise it up. God don't care who your daddy is. I'll make that point here in a second. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. What is he saying there? He's telling them you're about to be destroyed. Verse 10. So the people ask him, what shall we do then? He answered and said to them, what is he talking about? The fruits of repentance. He who has two tunics, let him give to him who has none. And he who has food, let him do likewise. Then the tax collectors, the traitors of the Jewish uh, uh, group, the Jewish nation, the traitors that work for Rome. Then the tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, teacher, what should we do? And he goes on, tells them, collect no more than what is appointed for you. Likewise, the soldiers say to him, what shall we do? All right. Modern day police officers, military slash police. That's what the soldiers are. All right. He said to them, do not intimidate anyone or accuse or accuse falsely and be content with your wages. What do you mean by that? Don't abuse your power. I'll just shoot through my notes here. The first fruits of repentance is the acknowledge that one status does not exempt them from the need of repentance. No repentance will lead a person to destruction. Paul said there is no one righteous, no, not one. Quoting David, we have all fallen short of the glory of God. It don't matter who your daddy is. This repentant thief most likely is a Jew. Praise God he repented, right? Yeah, it didn't matter that he came from Abraham. He needed to repent. The second thing we get in this passage is we need to give back to God by taking care of the poor. Let's look at Ephesians 4.8. Let him who stole, who's the guy on the cross? A thief. Still no longer, but rather labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give to him who is in need. Unfortunately, he couldn't do that because he was hanging on a cross, but he gave the other guy the rebuke that he needed. Let's go to the next verse, which is uh, Luke 19, 18 through 10. Here's Zacchaeus. Here's one of those tax collectors. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. Do you see the fruits of repentance in that man? And if, I, if I've taken anything from anyone fall, by false accusation, what do you tell the soldiers? Do not accuse anyone falsely. I restore fourfold. And what did our Lord and Savior say to him? Today. I'm about to go Billy Graham on you guys. Today. Not tomorrow. Not when I have some fun with with, uh, the, the vices that I have in my life, and then I'll give my life to God. He says, today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham. The gospel went to them first. For the Son of Man must come to seek and save that which is lost. He was a dirty, rotten, Roman working with tax collector who was a son of Abraham, and Jesus says he is saved. Amen? Amen. All right, moving on from that. So we also see this. Third, which means stop stealing. That's what he's telling the tax collectors. That's the third thing I get from what John the Baptist just said. Stop your stealing. When you know someone got saved is is when you see a change in their life. Something stops and and then they go another direction. All right? Well, that person still drinks and chews and cusses and hangs out with girls who do. Okay, well, God's going to work on them. At least he's not ripping people off anymore. (laughs) Praise God, right? Yeah, okay. So, the soldiers, is the next thing we get out of this, are to be meek and not engage in fraud and be content. In other words, not abuse their power. I can go on for half an hour on people who are abusing their power, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Going on. Now, what's going on with this thief? He's hanging on a cross. Can he do any type of work right now? No, he cannot. 
He cannot do anything work-related to show repentance, but he gives a righteous response. That's why we know that he is saved, plus what Jesus said to him. All right, this flies in the face, faith, face of every believer who is guilty of work-based salvation. He did not get baptized. That's a powerful thing to do. Jesus told you to do it, but he did not have time to get baptized. All right? He did not put any offering in the offering plate. He didn't have time for that, right? He, he did not have perfect attendance at church. He did not have time to be filled with the Spirit. And all of us Pentecostals know that is a powerful gift to have, but you know what? He did not have time for that. All right? He did not have time to take communion, but he just had communion with the one who was saving his soul. Amen? He had communion with the one who's saving my soul, your soul, and his soul. So everyone who wants to get caught up in works, remember one lesson from the feet of the cross. He didn't have time for all that. He gave one righteous response, looked at Jesus, asked his request, and got saved. Oh. Amen? Amen. All right. He mentions the fear of God in his rebuke, which is the beginning of wisdom. That's Proverbs 9, 10. Here you go. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Church, my whole mission as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ is to make sure everybody understands the knowledge of Jesus to have saving faith. But also, I'm not going to stand for stuff that is not true. Okay? More on that later. But the first thing that I know I need to do is that we have to get people to understand who Jesus is. And when they get a hold of Jesus, they'll have the same spirit that you do, and they might listen to reason. They might be able to handle your political view and what your perspective is on it. You might actually have a conversation with someone and You'll learn some things, and they'll learn some things, and you'll come together, and praise God, whoever's right, it don't matter because we know Jesus. Our world is never more divided, and then at the same time, the satanic world order has never been on such an attack that it is right now. So, more on that here in a bit. Moving on. He knows that Jesus is innocent and they are guilty. They're the ones who deserve this punishment. Let's go to verse 41. Yeah. It says, We indeed, we and we indeed justly for our we receive the, the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. So, this brings up a good question. All of us who believe in redemption, should we be for the death penalty? Should we be for capital punishment? It's a good question. I thought about it for years and years and years. Well, you ever heard of a guy named Adolf Hitler? He was responsible for... Um, they say six million Jews, but he wasn't just killing Jews, he was also killing his political dissidents, anyone who came against him. By the way, Mr. Uh, uh, Zelensky in uh, uh, Ukraine banned the Russian Orthodox Church just because he didn't like that they might turn people back to you know, another nation that he's fighting. Uh, he banded all of his other political people. But anyways, we'll talk about him another day. But back to uh, Mr. Mr. Hitler. In that war, it was 20-some million Russians that died. And it was also 20-some million Germans that died. One was like 24 million, the other one was like 26 million. We finally got into the war and we lost a half a million, just about. And I think it was like six, 600,000. Okay. That's a lot of death. 
Do you think if we captured him, we should have hung him with the rest of the Nazis? Hmm. Just thought. There's a guy named Fauci. He bears the name Anthony, and he has the title of Doctor. You guys might remember Mr. Green, Miss, Miss Green, MTD. She showed some images. Okay. Here's a Gateway Pundit article on this. It's the forgotten uh, monument to dead orphans from Fauci's torturous deadly AIDS testing is, is located in New York State and heartbreaking photos. In this article, you'll see that part where he's actually... They're actually torturing dogs just to see what these flesh-eating flies will do. Just to give you the story real quick, um, they were taking poor black kids in New York who contracted AIDS, and they put them, they were in, the ones that were in foster care and also taking some from their families, and they were giving them these drugs that were killing them and testing on them. Yeah. And then later on, the gay community came against him, and they were protesting him, saying, he is killing us because of the experimental stuff he had for the disease that was, that was going through their community. Should a person like that, you know, if he's um, convicted, judged by a, a jury peer, found guilty, should that person... Uh, you know, face the death penalty. Let's talk about Mr. Mayorkas. He bears the name Alexandro. I'm also going to talk about a guy named Soros. He bears the name George. These people have Jewish background in them. Is every Jew a good person? You ever heard of a guy named Judas? All right, right now our borders are open. And I was listening to this report one day on the War of Information. And there was this lady, she was a Christian woman, and her husband and his friends are in special ops. They were in special ops in the military. And they would go across the border, and they would look at the campsites of the cartel and the coyotes, and they would film what was there. And what was there was called rape trees. I have never been more disturbed in my life over millions of people dying than I was when I learned about what a rape tree is. They explain that people pay to have women and children brought up from, from uh, South America, and these escorts will do it. And then when they get up to the border, they have a campsite site. And they get their payment. And then the next day, all they got to do is load them on a van and send them on their way to who paid to have them. But now that they've gotten paid, they can do whatever they want. And they will do what they're going to do to the woman and strap her to that tree. Because you can go down there and see the shackles still there. And you can see their undergarments in the tree, which is a trophy that they had this girl. And then the kids... If she has kids, they see this happen to their mother, and then they do the same thing to the kids. Here's a report from 2006 where a person talked to Congress about these trees, if you want to read it. It talks about people on the border can hear women screaming at night. Now, you tell me. People who facilitate this and allow this to happen, should they face the death penalty? We all know who Lincoln Riley is. We know who she is. Do you know that Mr. Soros is the one who's behind all the defund the police stuff? Do you know he's the one who funds BLM and Antifa and uses them as his foot soldiers? Do you know he's the one who boasted and bragged 10 years ago that he started the war with Russia and Ukraine? Should that guy face the death penalty? Now, as a pastor, I don't want anyone to die. I want everyone to get right with Jesus. 
And I've sat and watched fo photos of how they would have priests stand with the person who's about to be hung. And I always wondered, could I do that? It's pretty intense. You go meet with the person, they repent, but the state says they need to be executed, and you stand right there with them. Years ago, when BTK got caught, his Lutheran pastor stand with him the whole time. And I always wanted to shake his hand because that's quite, that's pretty bold to stand with your parishioner who's basically ruining your ministry, but he stood with them to the very end. Church, I think I could now. I think I could stand next to someone, assure them that they're going to be with Jesus today while the state takes care of them and shows that if you ever do this type of activity, humanity will not put up with it. So you shouldn't try it. And if you ever hear from the demonic, you better reject it before you ever start. Because this is what we do to people who commit these kind of things. I've changed a little bit. But back to this guy, the thief on the cross. What is he doing? He's accepting his punishment. Wow. He says, I am wrong. And I do deserve this. He was, being, he was given a Roman crucifixion. You know how that works? You hang there for three days until you can't breathe anymore because of the way they stretch you across the cross. You finally give up and suffocate in pain. You ever heard of excruciating pain? That's where it comes from. Crucifixion. And he says, you know what? I deserve this. Sometimes we don't repent until we start getting a taste of our own consequences. <laughs> if our country doesn't repent and turn from our wickedness, our leadership and our leadership, if our leadership doesn't repent, do you guys realize that we have aborted 60 to now they say 70 million babies? You know what, church? We might just be like the thief on the cross watching Russian nukes come down upon us and go, well, Lord, remember me as we go into your kingdom. We are now getting what we deserve. And you're like, John, that's some harsh preaching. How about you read the prophets? The prophets would repent for their own country. They would repent for their own people. What I'm doing up here is biblical. Now, you guys want some good news? I thought you were ready for it. First of all, our media is terrible. This is an article about Operation Mockingbird. All of our media is being controlled by the CIA. If you ever want to read up on that, there's that article there. I bring this out every time just to let you guys know you cannot believe anything the media is saying. You know why we can't believe our local media? Because they didn't tell you about this story. You know that most Kansans are pro-life, but yet we have a clinic in Wichita. Exclusive doctors resign in protest from Kansas Abortion Clinic. This is a group. This is a group that's for abortion and for women's rights. And they reported on this. Our media said nothing about it, but that abortion clinic has been shut down for three weeks now. And you guys want to know why? Because the director was only licensed to do Botox injections, not abortions. And 10 of the 14 doctors walked out and protested, we're not working under this. And that place has been shut down. Not by might, not by power, but by his spirit, we've been praying that that place will shut down. And we're going to continue to pray that that place shuts down. Now, I can go on and on and tell you about people who are in the news who are behind abortions, but we'll save that for another time because I got another cool video. I got a video that you're going to love. I want to show that to you. So let's move on. All right. The repentant wise thief says here that he is guilty, but Jesus has done nothing wrong. Jesus was next to him as the spotless lamb of God taking away his sin, my sin, and your sin. Amen? Amen? And we just need to understand, a lot of the church, 
And a lot of the, uh, the media, the alternative media, is under the same condemnation as evildoers when all they're doing is trying to let people know what's happening. We need to be wise as serpents, as harmless as doves. Amen? Let's look at verse 42. Then he said to Jesus, Lord. I love that. He said, Lord. <laughs> Some texts argue that the word karyos wasn't actually there, which means Lord. But that's fine. You want to take that away from me? All right, whatever. He just called on Jesus. And then he said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. I think he knew who Jesus was. I think he knew exactly who Jesus was. He recognized that Jesus as the Lord and Savior of humanity who has a kingdom. I think he got saved. I know he got saved because you're going to see what Jesus has to say. He requested the name that is above every name. Let's go to Philippians 2.9. It says that God has given him a name that is above every name. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name. The reason he did that is because Jesus went to the cross. Which brings people salvation. If we have it, let's go to Luke 17, 13. Here's in the Gospel of Luke where we get this repentant uh, thief. This is a leopard. Then he lifted up, they are leopards, they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. What did they just do? They called on the name that is above every name. Let's look in the same Gospel at 1838. Here's a blind man. He cried out, Jesus, Son of David, the Messiah, the coming one, the Lord, have mercy on me. Did Jesus respond? What did the thief on the cross do? He called on the name of Jesus. Now, Mel likes to bring up Christmas. So I feel like I'm going to bring up, I should bring up Christmas too. Let's go to the very beginning of the Luke gospel. Behold, Mary... You will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom. What did the thief just ask? Remember me when you come into your kingdom. There will be, praise God, no end to it. Then, of course, Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I don't know a man? And it goes on to 35. Do we have it? Yeah, we do. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also, that Holy One who is born to you will be called the Son of God. Church, in the gospel, his name was already in effect. Praise God. Before he even paid for our sins, his name could be called upon for salvation. His name could be called upon for healing. His name could be called upon, especially today, because he paid for you at the cross. Praise be to God. Yeah, I mean, really, do get excited. Let's go to the last verse and we'll finish this up. In verse 42 of, of our text, it says this. Then, no, sorry. Yeah. Then he said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. That, that was 42. 43 says, and Jesus said to him, assuredly I say to you, today. You guys like things getting done today? I like when we get things done today. You will be with me in paradise. Today is the day of salvation. 2 Corinthians 6, 2 says, for he says, in acceptable time, I hear you. In the day of salvation, I, I have helped you. 
Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Let's go to Hebrews 9.27. It is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. This man, this thief on the cross, was getting saved before his time ran out. He did not face God's judgment. He did face man's judgment. All right? Man's judgment is not always fair. It's not always correct. But he accepted it. But praise God, after capital punishment came upon him, he went home to Jesus in paradise. Praise be to God. When the late and great reverend and evangelist Billy Graham looked at this passage, he says there is only one deathbed confession in the Bible, so he said, I wouldn't try it. <laughs> well, why did he say that? Because this was Billy Graham saying, today is the day of salvation. Now, this video I'm going to show you, and again, those on YouTube, I can't show you this because I will lose my channel, but you can go to Christian Chapel, Wichita on Odyssey, and I will post these videos. Same guy who did the first video did a follow-up video, and you guys are going to love this. It is the power of repentance on the world around us. Critically listen to this report. He's going to say some things that are very, very key. I want every Jew, Palestinian, Ukrainian, and Mexican cartel to find the Lord Jesus Christ. I want MS-13 people to not exist anymore, but the ones that do exist, I would love for them to find Jesus. Amen? We want repentance to happen around the world. So, people on the video, I'll leave you alone for just one second, and I'll come back with a last comment. That was a non-Christian. I don't know if you caught that. He gave you the five points of repentance for what he's been finding out. And he was inspired by what's going on in Russia. Church, we're like two inches away from a nuclear holocaust, but we're like a half, a quarter of an inch away from revival. Let's pray for revival and that the other one doesn't overtake the other. Amen? Amen. All right. I'll turn it over to the worship team, those on the video. Have a great day.